Hello, I'm Lewis Nichols, and you're watching the Cornwall Channel. And on today's show, I'm joined by Andrew Ridgely. Hello. Hello. So firstly, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us on the Cornwall Channel. What do you think of the uh, the homemade set? Very smart, <laughs> yeah, some nice Cornish touches. I don't know how, how contemporary these are, but uh, <laughs> they would have been used once upon a time. So firstly, let's, we've got to talk about Cornwall. You, you clearly have a love uh, for the place. So when did you first fall in love with Cornwall? Uh, as a child, really. Um, my brother and I used to come down on holiday with mum and dad. Um, we holidayed uh, various places, Lou, uh, Bew, Polzeth. So really through um, you know, early childhood into our teens, we, we visited Cornwall. And of course, those holidays um, leave you with indelible memories of, of um, sunny days. Actually, there were sunny days. Um, generally, we were quite, we were quite, uh, we were quite lucky with, with the weather. Um, surfing on the, the little wooden um, belly boards that you used to buy. In fact, I remember we, we my brother and I bought, uh, we, we eventually bought a, a, one of these little wooden boards each and uh, got them home, we painted them, I uh, painted mine black with a, I did a template of the, uh, the front cover of the Eagles one of these nights, so I had, I had that and I, in silver edged with gold, it was quite smart. Did you keep it, or has it gone now? It's gone now, yeah, it has gone now. So yeah. Cornwall, um, a lovely place, but did you ever get to, to tour Cornwall or do any shows here during your time in, in Wham? We played at the Coliseum in St Austell uh, on, on our first tour in um, 1983, autumn of 1983. Um, it was a, I think it was a 30 date tour, it took us all over the, uh, the UK. And uh, yeah, in those days, there was a venue in St. Austell, uh, the Coliseum. <laughs> well, a venue. Well, there's a venue in Cornwall now, the, the Eden Project, of course. And the Hall for Cornwall. Right. Let's get that's getting work done at the moment. So, when did you move to Cornwall? What made you want to think, right, I'm going to, this is the place I want to be? Um, moved to Cornwall in 19, end of 1994. Um, uh, Karen and I at the time uh, lived in, in North London and um, uh, uh, I, I wasn't doing a great deal. Uh, her career was, it was sort of in a hiatus and so we, uh, we weekend in, in um, various uh, sort of country places and um, we came to Cornwall a few times and I, I we actually came down on, uh, on that uh, uh, with some other friends to learn to surf, um, which, was a, which was a great fun weekend. And um, I thought, fantastic place, really enjoy surfing, might yeah. as well move to Cornwall. <laughs> so uh, so um, yeah, we talked about it and um, eventually we, we made the decision to come down. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, been here ever since. And what do you like to do in your spare time? Because in Cornwall you can do everything from golf, from surfing. So what do you like to do in your spare time in Cornwall? Well, I, yeah, as you say, so, yeah. you know, Cornwall has got a wealth of, um, of things that, that activities, uh, if you like, the outdoor lifestyle. Um, love walking, love walking the coastal path. I mean, that, that is one of the, uh, the gems of, of uh, well, the whole, the UK. It's... Um, uh, magnificent scenery and um, takes you along some of the best coastline in the UK. Um, so it's absolutely glorious. So I really enjoy doing that. Um, used to surf quite a lot, less so these days. Um, haven't been in for a couple of years, to be honest. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a bit um, it's a bit hard for a, a, an older chap these days. <laughs> and uh, and um, it's, it's a bit dependent on, on a lot of different factors, so uh, not always not always great surf. Um, so um, yeah, as far as as far as uh, uh, outdoor activities go, you, there's a plethora, as you say. Uh, there were a couple, of, there were some great golf courses, um, very good ones um, near where I live, around Wadebridge, uh, at Travaux and and, Pol and um, St Anadoc, two of the, the you know 
do the top 100 links courses or golf courses in the country they are now so um, that and uh, cycling do, do a fair bit of cycling um, keep to keep fit really um, which again takes you through some fantastic scenery and, and, and wonderful uh, wonderful places so uh, yeah keep myself busy um, certainly during the the uh, fairer months uh, spring summer Awesome. Winter's a bit tricky getting out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, keeping yourself busy, you actually spend a lot of your spare time helping other people uh, with your charity work. Um, so we're going to talk about your, your work with the Delalio Rugby Works. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you do uh, for the charity and, and what the charity is about. Well, the charity, uh, Rugby Works, is it uh, aims to uh, assist kids that are in pupil referral units who have been excluded from mainstream education. Uh, through uh, a difficult point in their life. You know, they wouldn't be in referral units if, if uh, they weren't um, facing difficulties. And it aims to get them into sustained employment, education uh, or training. Um, and it does that with a program um, of using rugby as a tool to build self-confidence, uh, interpersonal skills um, and and really to, to bring these these kids out of themselves and to realize that they're, they're not on their own they're not marginalized um, even though they 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 will have felt uh, so certainly um, being excluded from mainstream education is is, a, is is being marginalized to a degree so they're so they're um, they may have chaotic backgrounds. They may um, they may struggle with with self image or have been bullied at school. So so they they have they have difficulties. They have challenges, but they're not um, uh, insurmountable. And the the coaches, the rugby works coaches that go in, act as mentors and and really try and steward and 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 assist them through their studies and, and prepare them for uh, the next step whether it be education employment or, or training and it has a very uh, very good success rate in keeping uh, these young people who have been through the program in uh, in education employment or training uh, way above uh, the um, the sort of the norm for, for pupils that have been through referral units but don't take part in, in the rugby works program. Uh, and my role is, is uh, um, I've been asked to become an ambassador, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, that would be, that would involve me a little uh, um, more um, comprehensively than I have been in the past. And um, uh, we, we, generally speaking, I've, I've fundraised and, um, and, and, and assisted with giving the, the, the charity uh, a profile. You know, from, uh, social media and interviews, etc., um, and and so the the um, the the future, uh, I shall be getting a little more engaged um, with with the the program, as it works in the in the referral units and visiting uh, various. Uh, uh, they have competition days where they they play rugby and. Um, uh, and various aspects of, of that sort of uh, those elements. So, how did you actually become involved with the charity, and what was it about the charity that made you think, Do you know what, I'm going to I'm going to put some time into this? Uh, you know, how did it all come about for you? Um, well, I'd um, I'd met some um, chaps through uh, um, through a lady friend of mine, uh, and uh, I was I just started cycling for fitness really, and. Um, and uh, they they had taken part in the 2012 um, charity. I think um, one or two of the chaps, uh, their their um, children had gone to the same school as, as Lawrence's, so they knew him uh, loosely through that. Um, and um, they they uh, they broke me into into doing the the 2014 um, edition of the the Cycle Slam. With not quite uh, accurate um, summary of, of what it was all about, it certainly didn't uh, didn't uh, didn't lead me to to understand quite how tough it was going to be. But 
<laughs> uh, I was well prepared for it. Cycling yeah. around Cornwall will prepare you for, for, for most, um, most rides you'll come, come no, up definitely. against. <laughs> it's quite challenging at times. It is, yeah. Um, but what I would love to ask you is, we were talking a little bit off air um, before the interview about there's not many charities that actually help uh, kids that have been expelled from school and kind of get back on that track and give them some direction. So do you have any kind of success stories that you can tell us about or, or share some some positive things yeah, about the Yeah, I mean, there, there are numerous success stories. Well, um, one of the most recent, uh, a young chap called Teddy, he uh, came into the into the uh, program. Um, he'd been excluded from the school, and, and he was he was he was difficult, um, uh, not particularly uh, um, readily ready to engage. And um, through the through the course of the program, uh, it became apparent that he had a real desire mm. to. Um, to go into fashion, to, to, to have a career in some respect in the fashion industry. And part of the, uh, the programme that, that um, Rugby Works uh, uses is that they uh, have significant ties with uh, various corporates and, uh, and they use those ties to, to give um, the young people who are going through the programmes a chance to experience uh, the working place, the working environment, and uh, they have a tie with Burberry. So, um, a, uh, an a, a, a sort of a work experience day had been planned at Burberry, and the, uh, the uh, in order to get on to the, these um, ex experience days. There has to be the, the young people have to show a, a level of, of um, progress within the within the program, and and, uh, and it was obviously it was a, a motivating factor for Teddy, um, and his um, his behaviour and uh, his his application improved greatly. Uh, went to Burberry, and and they were Burberry were really uh, impressed with. He showed a a, a real um, talent for for art, real uh, artistic flair, and design flair, and it really I think the experience really focused his mind. I think it gave him uh, an insight into um, what uh, work could bring him as an individual. And he applied himself. He 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 did well in his um, um, his, his GTSEs, and has gone on to college to to, to, to study um, design, um, textiles, and an art. So uh, uh, um, a course that will will you know very much focused uh, um, toward. Where he wants to end up, which is which is uh, um, working in the fashion industry or design industry. So, um, uh, a really a really good example of, of what the the program can achieve. And um, uh, as I said, he 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 became uh, the most improved um, uh, pupil, as it were. Um, the, the awards this year that that was the award that was uh, given to him so he's he's made good progress really good progress it does make you think if it wasn't for that program you know he might not have got to experience that or, or even get to that level so it shows what what great work the the program does and I know you were saying um, it's actually gone nationwide now and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger it has yeah uh, this year there, there was a, a big expansion um, this year, or it may have been last year, but it's gone into, I think, uh, around 40 new referral units nationwide. So it's, uh, it's growing, um, it's growing at a real pace. Um, it's, it's, it's effective, it's proven to be effective, um, and it, uh, it, it is enhancing uh, the chances of, of, of young people, um, for whom otherwise, um, May not may not be able to realise their um, their their potential, which is what it's all about, really. You, they, everyone has potential. Yeah. It's really just a case of, of um, being able to discover it and uh, and nurture it and uh, find a, find the the right application for it. 
And I know the programme works on giving, giving these kids direction. You know, this is the next steps you need to take in life and putting them on that kind of path so they can make their, their own choices, but put them on the correct path. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, it, it gives structure, it, gives, uh, it, it imparts and teaches discipline, personal discipline, and, uh, and, and gives, the, um, gives those, those young people um, an idea of what, how they will have to, to behave and think and uh, in order to, to make a life for themselves. You know, they, because they come into the programmes a lot of the time with a very, uh, a very closed mentality in the sense that they may already have, have felt they would given up uh, and so um, it, it, it opens their minds. Um, the mentors, the, the guys and girls that, that uh, the rugby coaches, the, the rugby works coaches that go in there have a, have a particular role in that. You know, they, they, they are able to reveal to, to these kids that um, you know, life is positive and it should be positive and, and uh, they are, the, the Rugby Works coaches are fantastic examples of positivity and, and a lot of them have come, one or two have come through the programme themselves to become uh, Rugby Works coaches. Wow. So yeah, it, it's, um, uh, it's a really um, positive and optimistic uh, outcome. Um, that is there to be had if, if these kids choose to grasp it. And you've done um, fundraisers for the charity, including cycling. Uh, so have you got any upcoming charity mm -hmm. events that you can tell us about that you're going to be working on for the charity? Um, well, the, the, next, um, the next major fundraising um, program is um, cycling, is, is actually in 2020. The cycle slam is biennial. Um, and uh, but uh, I'm actually involved with um, the preparation and, and organising um, a charity event for the Cornwall Air Ambulances, their new um, fundraising um, programme which aims to, to raise funds to buy uh, a new helicopter and Victoria Milligan whose family uh, was, was involved in that tragic accident uh, in Padstow um, she has asked me to, to um, uh, assist her um, she, she um, arranged she organized uh, an event about five years ago now um, uh, after the, uh, the the tragedy that, that uh, afflicted the family, in, in it was a, a boating accident. Um, it was, an, it was um, uh, and across the media, really, um, it was a really um, h horrible accident. And Victoria has has uh, risen above that. Uh, to uh, it's an extraordinary story, uh, the fortitude and. Um, that she has displayed, and she has she has been very she's instrumental in raising the money for the for the night um, flying equipment that uh, that um, the the air ambulance use and that enables them to to, to work effectively you know, in the dark. Uh, and and so next year in September, the uh, Milligan Peloton de Pasti will take place and uh, raise money for the, uh, to assist with the purchase of uh, the new helicopter. And what's going to be involved with, with that? Uh, well, uh, it'll be three days cycling uh, wow. around Cornwall, um, various routes which uh, I'll have a, a part in, um, in um, planning. So uh, it'll be, hopefully, it'll raise yeah. Good sum of money, um, and uh, we're hoping to open it to uh, all cyclists. Um, um, so it's in its uh, gestation at the moment, but it will happen, and, and we're working towards that. So that's a, a, an exciting mm -hmm. um, project to be a part of, and, and I'm looking forward to being able to, to, to help raise money for a Cornish-based um, charity. 
Well, it's great in your spare time that you're helping so many people. We hope that you guys can make a small donation today. The links are on the screen right now for both charities. Please, any donation would be absolutely appreciated, won't it? Certainly will, yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it will assist in in saving lives in the case yeah. of Cornwall Air Ambulance and uh, and making lives um, in the in the case of the Rugby Works program. With the Rugby Works program, have you ever worked with any of the kids and they they've recognised you or that they they were fa fans of Wham's uh, music? Not as yet, not yet, but but hopefully, as I said, my role uh, as ambassador. I've met a few of the the, yeah. the kids at, at the awards events, etc. But my my role as ambassador hopefully will take me uh, f further into into contact with them. And uh, who knows? Yeah, I doubt it. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's back in the mists of time for most of these kids. I don't know. Do you know? I mean, I'm so I'm 25, and you were saying that you moved here in '94. So I was one years old at the time when you moved to Cornwall, and I'm a massive fan of, of Wham's music. Does it ever surprise you that people growing up still look back at the music and, and love it? Because it, it kind of doesn't doesn't get old. Uh, well, it does surprise me a wee yeah. bit that uh, you know younger people seem to. Uh, um, enjoy, well not enjoy, but, but be um, fans of the, yeah. of the band. Um, I think the music is, is enduring, yeah, um, certainly. Um, and I think, of course, there's a reason why young people are exposed to it. You know, parents, their parents <laughs> were most probably fans <laughs> and have got, and, have got uh, and play the music, you know, it's... Um, uh, we all, I think, tend to, as we get older, the, the, the music we grew up with um, has a particular resonance and, and an importance in, in, in your, your own life story. And so it's, uh, it's one of those things we tend to, to play a lot of music from when one was growing up and, of course, you know, if you've got kids, they're going to be exposed to that. So I think that, would, that may account for, for uh, some of the reasons why. We, we appeal to younger generations as well. So what musicians remind you of your childhood? Is there, is there people that you listen to and it just brings back your, your childhood memories? Uh, yeah. Um, my, my childhood was spent um, you know, listening to uh, the, the contemporary acts of the, the early 70s. Um, we had limited amount of records in the house um, when I grew up. Um, uh, Beatles album and uh, a couple of Beatles albums and Rolling Stones and uh, some Elvis Presley, etc. So it was, it, they, they, they're formative. Yeah. Those, I remember those uh, albums very well. And did you, in your career, did you ever get to meet any of those musicians? Because that must have been crazy, listening to them as a, as a, as a child and then getting to meet them at, at different shows. Yeah, one or yeah. two. Um, met, uh, had the f good fortune of meeting uh, Elton John, who was very wow. you know, kind and, and generous. He, he invited uh, George and myself to, to a lunch when we were recording uh, the second album in the south of France. And uh, we, we went over to, uh, to his house and, and spent a very pleasant afternoon with him and Bernie Taupin as well. Um, so that, that, that was... Uh, um, a real privilege to meet two of, of some two of the biggest uh, heroes of ours, certain music heroes, certainly. And Wham would have been the music heroes for a lot of people in the 80s as well. So, do you do you have a, a standout moment, something that you always look back on with, with fond memories that, that happened in your career during your time in Wham? Well, there, there were a number. Um, I remember the being told that we we'd been we were going to get a contract was um, was was probably one of the highlights. Um, first live show we ever did. Uh, the, the, the sense of, of uh, excitement and nervousness that, that accompanied that uh, is, is, is vivid in my, <laughs> in my mind. Um, so, and, and the, the, the last, the final concert as well, that, that whole day is, uh, is seared indelibly uh, in, into my memory. So, there, yeah, there were, there were a great deal of highlights. And do you, do you miss it, miss that kind of passion for music? And do you think you would ever return uh, to the industry? Uh, I, I, I won't return to the industry, no. No, no it's... Uh, um, at my age, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, one. And two, um, 
the, the what I used to miss performing a wee bit, um, but uh, the, that that sort of that um, that desire lessens um, as the years go by. So uh, no, I, I don't really hanker after it uh, anymore these days, uh, and. Um, and it would be it would be extremely difficult to re-establish um, oneself in in the industry. Really, um, you don't get too many hit singles written by fifty-five-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, um, fashion one of the biggest things in the eighties. And I was looking at various images of, of yourself uh, in Wham. Was there any time you look at pictures back now and you think, oh my goodness, why, why did I wear that outfit? Because some of them are yes, quite out there. Uh, almost every time <laughs> I see those, those, those images. Yeah, there were some absolute shockers. <laughs> uh, so I try not to, if, uh, if at all possible. Yeah, the, um, the for some, for some uh, completely unknown reason, um, in hindsight, I, I decided that uh, when we toured the States, I think in, in 85, to have sort of billowy silk <laughs> kind of pirates st <laughs> um, stuff, and it was, it was, it was remarkable. Um, not quite sure what, uh, <laughs> what, what was crossing my mind at, in those days, but um, yes, the, regrettably, the evidence remains. And the hairstyles, they were, they were quite out there as well. It wasn't just, just the fashion. Yeah, <laughs> they, well, the, the, the um, yes, my, my attempt at growing my hair long was, was really unsuccessful. Um, my hair doesn't grow um, very quickly at all, and it didn't in those days either. So it was, uh, it, it really was something of uh, half of, of one thing and uh, half a dozen of the, of the other. So um, yes, there was some. But George had George had remarkably big hair. He did he did big hair. Um, my, mine was uh, wasn't quite as large. <laughs> did you ever get envious of, of George's hair? No, can't no. say that I did. <laughs> no, hair wasn't really a, 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 um, a big, a big thing for me. In fact, I remember I, I got it cut um, shortly after we we returned from China and had some more filming to do, and and uh, it, I all had all my hair cut off. So it was, <laughs> it wasn't uh, continuity wasn't great. I've got to say, to, to have you on the channel today has been incredible, and I love the, the fact that you're doing so much for, for charity and helping other people in your spare time as well. You, you've clearly got a love and passion for Cornwall as well, and hopefully this will be the, the first of many times on the Cornwall channel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.